Okay, so I am back for another video. It's going to be another Poke Abilities video this time, of course. But as you can see from this top thing here, it's going to be a video about specifically Ursaring. And as you can see from the title of the video, it's been a bit contentious. Because Ursaring has always been incredibly strong in Poke Abilities. Even going as far back as Gen 7, if I can... There it is. Even going as far back as Gen 7 for Poke Abilities, Ursaring has always been a top threat. Yeah, there was a lot of competition as a Guts Pokemon in Gen 7 because of specifically Conkelder. But also things like Hariyama, or not Hariyama, but also things like Swellow for a normal type Guts user. However, Ursaring was still able to make its uh, place known as one of the most terrifying Pokemon in the meta. However, in Gen 9, it was honestly pretty broken in the pre-DLC meta, the pre-home meta rather. And it's something that a lot of, looking back on it, it wasn't really utilized properly, would be the best way to describe it. Because Ursaring really had so much that it could do, but so many people limited it just to one thing, which was wall breaking. And while that is amazing... For Ursaring to be able to do, it shouldn't be the only thing, or it's not the only thing that it can do. However, with the recent DLC 2 metagame developing for Poke Abilities, and a lot of the recent bans, this has put Ursaring on the map even more so as one of the biggest threats in the metagame. Now, I do not believe that it is a top 5 threat because those top 5 Pokemon solidly, at least in my opinion, are Azumarill, King Gambit, Clefable, Clodsire, and Great Tusk. I don't care how you order the 5, it's just somewhere those 5 are the top. But Ursaring is at either 6th or 7th place right now, maybe 8th in my opinion, it's the competition between 6th through 8th place, in my opinion, consists of Ursaring, Corviknight, and Dragapult. And Ursaring definitely has an incredibly solid argument for it. Despite what may seem like a rather limited uh, roles, Ursaring can be shockingly good at multiple things. Now, the most clear set from the start that... The most commonly used set is going to be just Terra Normal, Facade, CC, Crunch, Protect. This is a lot of what was seen in the pre-home meta where Ursaring was being used as just a wall breaker. Because the free guts and free quick feet just from Flame Orb was so huge and it was worth giving up a move slot to just protect because at the time there wasn't that many Pokemon that hard walled Ursaring. And there still isn't nowadays, but we will get to that point later on. Ursaring, through this, was allowed to punch holes that let its teammates clean up nicely at the end of games. However, over the course, like I said, over the course of time, DLC 2 eventually came out and more roles were eventually found. One of the first being the Trailblaze Sweeper. Now, of course... Quick Feet already ha helps a ton with the boosting speed, because that is something that normally Ursaring struggles with. And if you run a Jolly, you hit a, an effective base 107 speed tier with max investment. However, if you're an Adamant, you only get an effective 93, which is unfortunate, but the buff of Trailblaze means that Ursaring has the ability to simultaneously attack and raise its speed at the same time, even hitting some bulky waters like Alomomola, or even some frailer but scary waters nonetheless, like Greninja at the time, for super effective damage. 
which is definitely something noteworthy. This would also allow you to run Adamant instead of Jolly, which means that you will have an, some extra power, even if it's not needed, sometimes it can prove to be helpful. Of course, Flame Orb is the best item on, or most ran item on all of these sets, although I will get into something a bit later that hasn't been utilized even after the DLC 2 meta. But yeah, so far we see the Wall Breaker, we see the Trailblaze Sweeper, and then next we have another Wall Breaker, but specifically Terra Electric Thunder Punch. Because one of the biggest ways that people used to deal with Ursaring was through Dondozo or Corviknight. And yeah, you couldn't just protect to get the free Flame Orb proc. It would, it would require more work, but eventually you would get it in, you would get the proc. And that means that if you tear electric, you'd be able to Tuco, Corviknight, and Dondozo, which would be significantly more difficult to do without the Terrestrialization and Thunder Punch. So, the biggest two things that gave Ursaring trouble were able to be dealt with just like that. However, it was eventually found out that a lot of this could be done with just a basic Sword Stance set. Because it it will require Terra Normal oftentimes, but Terra Normal plus two, or actually the plus two doesn't even matter for Dondozo because uh unaware, but plus two. Why did I? Okay, let me reset. Sorry about that. Plus two does not matter for Dondozo because of unaware. However, Terra Normal facade, even if you are drawing nature. After Stealth Rock does have a chance to Tuco, it's not a 100% chance to be fair, but a, a chance to Tuco with Don Dozo fully invested is a chance to Tuco fully invest in Don Dozo. That's nothing that should be scoffed at. And Swords Dance made it really scary against Corviknight due to the fact that it goes from being threatened by Body Press to easily to come with close combat and making Corviknight scared to switch in. And while yes, that means you are using effectively half of your close combat PP instead of a quarter of it, it also means that you're getting rid of a huge physical wall that could inhibit e either your Ursaring or your Ursaring's teammates from making progress on the opposing team. And also, this is one of the biggest things that this set has started to realize Terra Ghost instead of Terra Normal. Terra Electric was really nice to bust through Corviknight and Dondozo. And Terra Normal was amazing to boost Facade even further. However, Terra Ghost was mostly... Or, I shouldn't say was. Is mostly used as a way to blank body press users who use that as either their only move or their only strong move in terms of the offensive side. Such as Corviknight, of course. You have Zamazenta, who does run crunch to be fair but ursaring isn't as scared of that when it's a normal type and will still be able to get off decent damage with facade before switching out after the terrestrialization because it doesn't want to be hit by crunch when it's a ghost type another thing that this does is completely blank brelu mock punch and while you are still scared of bullet seed you do get a really strong hit off immediately the last set has been one that combines two of the uh, things that we have already seen. Of course, I don't know why I had Terra Fighting on this, because I took Close Combat off a set. Terra Dark is probably better for... Uh, Terra Dark would be better than Terra Fighting on this if you're running Crunch, of course. But Terra Ghost is probably still the best for those advantages that I had already mentioned. But a double dance set with both Trailblaze and Swords Dance is going to be even scarier than just having one of those. Although you unfortunately do have to sacrifice the ability to run one of Close Combat or Crunch and choose which one you prefer running. So those are the big Ursaring sets. But why do I have a Loma Mola here? Well, because you see, a lot of times Ursaring was mostly held back by contact punishment. 
and big walls. So, of course, you can't have things just like special walls. So that would be no Blissey, no Claude Zire. And then we scroll down, and a lot of these seem very physically intact. So these are the big ones that we're going to keep. Alamomola, two code by uh, plus two swords, or plus two facade. Corviknight, two code by plus two close combat. Dondozo, chance to be a two code by tier normal facade. Garganackle, two code by plus two, or not even plus two, two code by close combat. Uh, Gliscor, 2 code by Facade. Great Tusk, 2 code by Facade. Heatran, 2 code by Close Combat. Landorus, even through Intimidate, 2 code by Facade. Ting Lu, 2 code by Close Combat. Zamazenta is one of the better checks for sure. Same with Archaladon. Hydrapple, 2 code by Facade, even if Regenerator is helpful. Kama O, while you do threaten it with a Fighting Stab... You're also two code by facade. Skeleturge, two code by crunch. Wheezing Galler, even though you shut off the guts, you are still two code by facade due to the stab, especially if it tear normals. Zapdos, two code by facade. Amoongus, two code by facade. Cresselia, two code by crunch. Deoxys Defense, two code by crunch. Hippowdon, two code by tear normal facade. Moltres, two code by um, tear normal facade. Suicune, two code by tear normal facade. And then we have another box, Reuniclus, 2 code by uh, Crunch, Slowbro, Slow King, Galarian Slow King, all 2 code by Crunch, Bronzong, 2 code by Crunch, Toxpux, 2 code by Crunch. So that leaves you with two options, one of them being a mod that may get banned itself soon in Archaladon due to the restricting effects it's had on the meta being very similar, if, if not even enhanced further and poke abilities due to the fact that rain is more viable with advantages like Swift Swim, Sniper, Kingdra. So with that being banned, it leaves one of the only options as uh, Zamazenta, which, yeah, it's still a great Pokemon. By no means is it broken or overpowered. It's not going to get banned anytime soon. It's a really healthy effect on the meta, but it makes Ursaring really hard to deal with. Now, really hard to deal with versus impossible to deal with, those are two completely different things. And do I think Ursaring is too powerful? I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure. I believe that honesty is the best way to approach this, and if I'm being completely honest, I do not know how powerful Ursaring is. Or, I shouldn't say I do not know how powerful it is, because I have used it and seen it in action. I do not know if I would consider it overbearing for the current meta, because we did just ban, at the end of the month, all of Champau, Basque Legion Mail, and Hysuian Braviary, which were all incredibly restricting on the meta, both in team building and in play. So, I think that the meta, the meta hasn't had enough time to settle. And with everything that Ursaring two Kos or just straight up Okos, that left it to where one of the best ways of dealing with it was going to be contact punishment and hazards. And that being things like Rocky Helmet, Iron Barbs or Rough Skin, and of course, Stealth Rock and Spikes. So... You'd gradually wear it down over time. However, one Pokemon came around in the DLC 2 meta that really switched that up and made Ursaring so much better than it was otherwise. And that Mon is going to be this thing right here called Alomomola. Now, this Palindrome Pokemon doesn't seem much at first. An amazing physical wall, of course. Scald, one of the best moves, if not the absolute best move in the game. Flip turn for momentum plus or generator makes it especially insane. And then wish is the big thing. Because wish support has always been huge. You take a look at the Pokemon that can learn wish, especially the ones that are in Gen 9. A lot of them are really bad, like even going up to ZU. All of them pretty bad. 
PU, bad. Even Scr Screamtail had a very small niche as a screen setter and pre home poke abilities, but that has since died out like fucking crazy. And the only good wish users are Aloma Mola, Vaporeon, Umbreon, and Sylveon, and Clefable. And for those five Pokemon, those being the Evolutions and Clefable, will mostly just use Wish for themselves. Even Clefable has stopped using Wish for the most part, just so it has another move slot freed up. And same case with Umbreon, because it would prefer to have an extra move like Thunder Wave or Taunt instead of wasting on Protect when he could just run Moonlight instead of Wish and Protect. However, Aloma Mola doesn't mind that too much as it has the ability to heal itself with their generator which none of these other wish users have and switch itself out through flip turn so this means that for once we finally have a wish user that can solidly support its team offensively or through providing extra health for the offensive threats that have sh troubles with longevity, as well as to support uh, the defensive Pokemon on any team in order to make it harder to wear them down over the course of a game. An Ursa Ring is by far the biggest beneficiary of this, at least in my opinion. Because while Ursa Ring has struggled to get past contact punishment, to get past hazard damage and chip that it may accrue over the course of a game, when you have a Pokemon such as Aloma Mola passing wishes that have such high HP count, like even if we just take this right here, that would be, let's see, 250 would be 500, so 34 divided by 2 would be 17, 250 plus 17. That's 267 HP that you would be giving to Ursa Ring whenever it switches in after you use Flip Turn with Alomomoa, which is going to be absolutely huge. 267 is more than two-thirds of this Ursa Ring's uh, HP that it has when it's uninvested. And just being able to repeatedly support a team like that while not requiring the use of Protect immediately after due to your own Regenerator makes it to where for the first time in a Pokeabilities meta, we've been able to see Wish Support truly show how good it can be due to the fact that it's not held back by being on only bad Pokemon or having no reliable way to pass it to your teammates. We've seen how much this can do for Pokemon like Azumarill, for Pokemon like King Gambit, for Pokemon like Heatran. And then we've started seeing it for less bulky Pokemon that sometimes struggle with staying on the course or with staying on the battlefield long enough. Things like, of course, Ursaring, but also some other mons like Life Orb users, Hisuian Lilligan, Kama O, Raging Bolt. We've seen how much it really does and how much it's elevated so many Pokemon. But like I said, the biggest beneficiary is Ursaring. And that's really the only thing that's making me think that this could push it to be too much eventually. Like I said earlier, I am not sure if I would currently consider Ursaring to be overwhelming for the meta. And... I do not think that it should be tested, at least right now. In my opinion, the three biggest issues right now are Archaladon, King Gambit, and Clefable. Arch does the same things it did in Base OU. King Gambit can no longer be checked by Intimidate users. If anything, it gets stronger. It gets stronger from stray stat drops, like from Azumarill, Player Off, or Dragapult, Shadow Ball. It get stronger from a simple sticky web it now has so many avenues for sweep that it didn't even need an ou to be a top two used mon so having those random avenues and opportunities opened up even more can just be completely game breaking and then clefable only because the cosmic power set these three are the big mons that we're looking out for currently Ursaring is not on the radar. I'm not sure if 
it will be put on the radar because Poke Abilities is no longer the OM of the month. I did want to give my thoughts on it because I know it is, it's more like a mascot of the meta than anything else at this point due to how good it's been both of the times it's appeared. And with that, with my thoughts out of the way, I did want to say thank you all for watching. Of course, you know it's been Typhlosion787, and I will see you in the next video.